Hey everybody, this is Paul. Welcome to Lesson 31 in the Intermediate Algebra Series. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to solve some first-degree equations. So, the first first-degree equation I have is right here, and it says 14 minus x equals 7. So, this equal sign right here shouldn't be overlooked. It basically tells us that everything on the right-hand side is equal to all the stuff on the left-hand side. So, that means that 14 minus x has the value of 7. So in order for this statement to be true, we need to figure out what value x has to be for 14 minus x to be equal to 7. And it turns out that 14 minus 7 is equal to 7. So therefore, when x equals 7, this statement is true. So therefore, x equals 7 is our answer. So let's look at this equation right here. So now we have 5 times some number equals 10. So it turns out that 5 times 2 is equal to 10. And so when x is equal to 2, this statement is true. And so therefore, our answer is x equals 2. So now let's solve the same types of equations, but let's use some algebra this time. So let's say that we have the equation 9 plus x is equal to 13. So now we're saying that the entire left-hand side is equal to 13. So let's just pretend this says 13 equals 13. So if we subtract 9 from each side, then the result should be the same since these both equal 13. So this is 13 minus 9 and 13 minus 9. And so that means that we started with the same answer, we subtracted the same value from each side, then the result should be equivalent. So 9 minus 9 is 0, and then we have the plus x term here. And then we have 13 minus 9 is 4. So this is 0 plus x equals 4, or simply x equals 4. And so this is our answer, and we got it using algebra. So x equals 4, so we could simply rewrite this top statement 9 plus 4 equals 13, and that's true. So we went ahead and solved that one. Let's do one more problem here. This one's a little bit harder to see the answer. So we have 30 times x is equal to negative 6. So now we're asking ourselves, what value does x have to be in order for this statement to be true? So this is a little bit hard to see. So let's just go ahead and realize that because of this equal sign, we know that this entire side is equal to negative 6. So we just want to get x by itself now. So let's just go ahead and divide each side by the value 30. Because 30 divided by 30 will give us 1, and 1 times x is simply equal to x. Now in order for this statement to still be true, we need to divide this side by 30 as well. So this becomes negative 6 divided by 30. And we'll just go ahead and put our equal sign down here now. So 30 over 30 cancels here. So now we're left with x is equal to negative 6 over 30. And we can simply move this negative sign out front. So we'll go ahead and do that now. So x is equal to negative 6 over 30 here. And so 6 is equal to 2 times 3. So we'll just write 2 times 3, and then that's over top of 30. 30, and don't forget the negative sign, and 30 is equal to 10 times 3. So now we have 3 over 3, so that cancels, giving us negative 2 over 10. And then we can simplify this a little more. 2 is equal to 2 times 1. Don't forget the negative sign. Let's see, there we go. So 2 times 1 is equal to 2, and 10 is equal to 2 times 5. So 2 over 2 cancels. So this gives us the answer, negative 1 over 5. We'll just say x equals negative 1 over 5. So when x equals negative 1 over 5, the original statement that I wrote, which was 30x equals negative 6, is true. So you may not be able to see this right away, but if you were to plug in negative 1 over 5, where the x is, multiply negative 1 over 5 by the number 30, 
you'll find that the value is equal to negative 6. So thanks for watching. Um, we'll see you guys in the next tutorial. So you guys have a great day. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.